Welcome to another edition of RCE. This is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. You can find the links to all of our Twitters and our blogs and the entire back catalog, which is special. This is a very special episode. This is episode one hundred. Special 100. episode. This is not just another episode. Which episode is it, Brock? It is one hundred. It is episode one hundred. The very first episode. <laughs> Jeff is going to get a kick out of this because. Jeff was the first guest, and then I wrapped him into being on every show after that. Yeah, well, yeah, George was on there, too. That is true. When, when was it? January 2009. We've been doing this over six years. 2009? Yeah, we've been doing it six years. How did we only hit 100 episodes since 2009? Doesn't it seem like there should be a lot more episodes? Yeah, someone should go mine the scrape the site and mine the oh, data. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't <laughs> ask people to do that. Because, because they'll do it. Oh Our audience will do it. <laughs> Yes, right. someone in the audience will do it. They'll find out, like, oh, yes, there were there were times when it was wonderful, when it was every two weeks, and then there were droughts. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little embarrassing, but it happens sometimes. People, life just gets in the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's all over the place. Happy, though. It's still pretty awesome. Yeah, every now and then you can see on my blog, Failure as a Service, I'll put up, like, our stats. It's, like, the culture that is RCE and the fact that, like, 10% of our clients come from other Unix system because everyone's rewriting their user agent because we're all tinfoil hat people and everything else in this industry. <laughs> we're terrible. <laughs> so, right, okay. Well, who do we have for 100 today? Okay, so our guest today is Eli Dart. Now, this is a follow up to our previous podcast, episode 99, which was Perf Sonar. Um, which was how to measure your network. Eli today is going to talk about the Faster Data Project. So, Eli, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Hey, how's it going? Uh, so, my name's Eli Dart. I'm a network engineer in the science engagement group for the Energy Sciences Network, or ESNet. Um, so, my job is to help science collaborations get the most out of the uh, mission science infrastructure that we build and deploy. Okay, so faster data, um, it's, it's, it's not software. It's, it, it involves software, but you're not actually writing software and stuff. So tell us what exactly is the faster data effort. So faster data is um, a network performance knowledge base, essentially. Um, it's a repository of, of a whole bunch of information that we have found to be helpful in, um, in really doing performance tuning or performance engineering or helping science collaborations really effectively use the uh, high performance infrastructure that, that exists for their use um, in the science complex. Okay, so no, wait a minute. Can you explain that a little bit? Because, I mean, don't I just need like my 10 or 100 gigabit uplink and I'm good to go? I mean, how much harder is it than that? Well, so think about this, right? You go and you buy this beautiful, shiny... Um, 4,000 core uh, uh, computing cluster and you go and you plug it all together and you slap on the default install and your users are good to go, right? Right. Not. So if you go and um, put together a high performance network and you go, alright, it pings, it's good. Walk away. It is unlikely that you're going to um, get the performance out of it um, that you would really like to or that you paid for. And so just like computing systems, um, networks have um, some configuration and some tuning um, and ideally some test and measurement involved in making them into high-performance, scientifically relevant tools. Okay, so Perf Sonar, you know, talked a bunch about, you know, we do a lot of continuous testing to see where the bottlenecks are and whatnot. But, but you're talking more about, well, at least... The, the, the first phase is when you install your shiny new cluster or your shiny new network switch or your shiny new uplink or things like that. What are typical types of issues that people run into that perhaps they didn't ex expect? So there are a variety of things, right? So, I mean, on, on the one hand, you could have bought the wrong gear um, and just you know, not, not have something that's going to perform when you throw the workload at it that you're going to throw at it. And so um, getting stuff, you know, getting I mean, the equipment itself that's capable in terms of the workload you're going to, you're going to run on it is important. And that's the, the, the analogy to HPC holds there as well, right? Um, you can also um, just not 
architect it right. I mean, there, there's an element of network architecture as well um, involved in making sure that the design of the thing is is well suited to the tasks you're going you're going to put to it. So there's there's, there's a variety of, of things that you have to consider, um, just as you would with any kind of major infrastructure investment. So it seems like there's a lot of different pieces you would need to kind of completely validate. You know, we had Perf Sonar, which was a collection of tools that ESNet's involved with, but you had more. You had tuning, and so you had best practices. You had software to use that implemented things differently than the common solutions. What are all the different pieces that faster data actually kind of advocates for? So, so, so faster data is a knowledge base, and so the the. You know, we we put things in there that that um, are sort of relevant to that set of tasks. Um, if you want to look at um, sort of what's the what's the right framework in which to consider high performance networking for data intensive science, um, you're getting into something that we call the science DMZ model. Uh, and a, uh, there's a big section of faster data devoted to the science DMZ model, but that's a, a set of design patterns for um, building and operating uh, network infrastructure for data intensive science, essentially. Um, so the, the, a lot of what would be um, things that you would consider in that, um, in, in, in building and deploying this, are covered by the science DMZ model. And then there are a whole bunch of aspects of faster data that include um, more detailed information about how do I, in particular, do I set this thing up or, or you know, how do I drive this particular tool so there's a whole breadth of, of information there. So let's go more into the science DMZ. Let's get, get to a specific detail. Um, yeah, I work at an HPC center at a large public university, and I have users with data, and they're logging in from all different parts of campus. I have a big distributed network. How would a, a science DMZ look like at an institution like mine? Now, so, so there is no one true science DMZ, right? The science DMZ is a it's a design pattern, not a legal specification. So um, there are a few key components um, of a science DMZ, um, and and their specific instantiation depends very much on the environment that you're in, the budget you have, uh, and the workload that you, that you need to serve. So the science DMZ is a is a enclave. At, typically at or near the site network perimeter um, this designed specifically for data intensive science that's where you put all of the, the pieces that you're that are have the or pieces that have the um, responsibility for getting data in and out of the site so specific um, systems which you call data transfer nodes would go there you definitely want perf sonar in there I mean you, you, you talk with Jason about perf sonar Personar is one, it is is a key component of the science DMZ, and that's a place where Personar really shines. Um, and so you you that's that's the spot where you would integrate all those things. So what would that look like for a major public university? There are a lot of different ways to build it, depending on the network culture, the funding environment, who needs what when. Um, are you just starting? Is this a mature deployment? There are a lot of different ways, um, uh, there's a lot of different flavors, a lot of different colors, a lot of different ways it can look. Now, the phrase DMZ is, is typically uh, associated with just hanging something out there with no protection on the Internet. Like if uh, you ask a typical Internet user, they look at their home router, they're like, oh, I can have one of my you know, home PCs hanging out on the DMZ, which basically means it's sitting in front of the firewall. Is that one of the precepts here? Yeah, so let's let's take one step back and say, so what what is a DMZ? Um, and, and actually, the notion for the for for the science DMZ, the DMZ part of that comes from traditional um, network security design. So in a previous life, I I network security engineer. Um, so if you look at what a security DMZ is, a security DMZ is a portion of the network at or near the site perimeter that is designed and built specifically to to host external facing services, authoritative DNS, um, incoming and outgoing um, mail, 